loving what you're hearing? Well, the establishment hates it. And right now, they're conjuring up new ways to try and censor RCR. To ensure you never miss a beat of the hard-hitting news you've come to know and love, make sure you're on the RCR mailing list. Get connected now at realitycheck.radio forward slash email. And now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about the announcement on Monday that there was an inquiry, there will, there will be an inquiry, involving no less than 12 government agencies looking into the shenanigans at Manurewa Marae and involving Te Pāti Māori. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go, so let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. How are you today? Fantastic, as usual. Excellent. Pleased to hear that. So... What are your thoughts about uh, Christopher Luxon announcing this inquiry that involves 12 government departments uh, looking into the shenanigans at Manurewa Marae, access to data across 12 government agencies? Well, I'm sorry to say I think it's a big fail for Luxon. I think he needed to actually have realised that if 12 agencies were involved, then something serious is or was going on and there needs to be one coordinated inquiry and that needs to have sufficient weight behind it to compel people and it needs to be a rather more wide-ranging than Luxon would possibly like. But I think if I was to give it a mark, it would be a fail. It's a failure because 12 separate entities doing 12 separate inquiries, that is going to be 12 separate whitewashes. Can't say that, uh, Miles. It would be a brown wash, if anything. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you know, here's (laughs) the thing. Luxon um, styles himself as, you know, corporate. He he knows what sides up in corporate. I can tell you that he has really demonstrated a lack of political nous with this one because it ha- has the potential with 12 separate inquiries to get away from him. For example, here's a scenario. What happens if um, one of the inquiries says nothing to see here? Okay, well, what do we do then? And how does that reflect on the other 11? What happens if four of them say nothing to see here? What about the rest? You know, it's just mind-boggling in the stupidity not to coordinate the inquiry. Yeah, I mean, I struggle with it. Uh, understanding the rationale here because there's a whole lot of fifth columnists that are in the civil service. They're all going to protect their their dairy ears. Correct. Uh, And, you know, perhaps they will say it's a bit of a brown wash, but where there's smoke, there's fire. And it sounds trite and it sounds contrived, but we've got, we haven't got just one uh, disgruntled person that, that they, you could say, oh, well, they're just a disgruntled employee, they're upset. You've got several whistleblowers here, including some from inside government departments. Uh, you have Correct. You have claims that the Electoral Commission says they've never received a complaint. Well, I happen to know that there are complaints to the Electoral Commission because I've spoken to some of the people who laid complaints with the Electoral Commission. Uh, so there's so, there's definitely some shenanigans going in and butt covering going on here, and I'm not at all comfortable uh, comfortable that we're going to get a result. I mean, I, I actually think what will happen is John Tamahiri will come out smelling of roses. There'll be some underlings that get thrown under the bus, as always is the case in these situations, and then he'll go, "See, I'm exonerated," and then then where are we? Well, I'll tell you something. It's even worse if. You know, you've got 12 separate inquiries and, say, four of them say, oh, nothing to see here. 
what are the other eight going to do? I mean, are they going to say, oh, there's been some serious issues? No, of course not. And, you know, the problem that Luxon's got is all of his own creation. Yeah. And the stupidity or perhaps the lack of political nous is going to cause a big problem um, with this for Luxon and... I can assure you that down the road, maybe six months, people are going to be saying, well, what happened? And if if what I suspect is going to happen, then Luxon is not going to come out of this with a clean pair of hands. No, well, I, you know, it, it shows, well, and to my mind, it looks like weak leadership. Well, to my mind, it looks like a lack of political nous. It looks like he has failed to consider the consequences. If you have a 12 separate entities, let's call them jurors. If they're not all unanimous, it's not a guilty verdict. And is that going to be the way out? That four of these inquiries are going to say, oh, nothing to see here. So therefore there was nothing really going on. I, you know, I struggle with this at every level. Yeah, I can't, I can't see a, a positive outcome for Luxon. But uh, you know what I can see? I can see plenty of hay being made by New Zealand First and the ACT Party. With this. Yes, and I think that the public, the eye-opening thing for the public is just how much taxpayers' money has been funneled into um, organisations that have no accountability and indeed organisations that may well have misused that taxpayers' money. I mean, I don't know. I'm not close to any of this, but the allegations to me look fairly severe. And the fact that um, John Tamahiri has come out, you know, of his corner with the gloves on, I would say that he is uh, concerned that some of these allegations are not going to end well for his um, organisation. No, I don't think they will. Um, but, you know, I actually quite like John Timahiri. I've always got on really well with him and engaged with him in a respectful manner, and I've had some respect for him in the past. Um, but that's waning quite considerably uh, as more and more of these this information comes out. Um, but, yeah, he is a rascal, and... Mm. He tries it on, and you know the the he he's helped and assisted by a weak media, who uh, probably are in line with what he's trying to say, and so they don't challenge him like they would any other party, and that's where we're being let down. We're being let down by the very same people who are crying crocodile tears about who's going to hold the powerful to account, and they're failing to hold him to account, and it's up to you know people. Uh, you know, like Thomas Kramner and other people that, uh, that are writing on blogs to hold them to account. And that's a tragedy for New Zealand's democracy, that the very people who talk about the loss of journalists being bad for democracy are the same ones that are ignoring what appears to be corruption at, at a, a serious level uh, without saying anything or doing anything or running interference on their behalf. Can I say you can add... 12 government departments to that list. There's all, they're, if they're going to run their own inquiry, it's just like asking me if my bedroom's tidy. The, the answer is, of course, my bedroom's tidy. And, you know, these 12 separate inquiries, they'll be inquiring into themselves. Do you think they'll find anything wrong with what they did? Oh, you know, maybe there was a procedural thing here and we didn't have this letter correctly authorised. No, I'm sorry having someone investigate themselves as in 12 government departments investigating themselves is just a, a sign of a lack of political nous. And I think that Luxon is going to have to deal with this again down the road when people won't accept the findings of these, um, I think you put it perfectly clearly, fifth columnist, um, civil servants investigating themselves. Nothing to see here. They'll all cry. Yep, so it's the fox investigating who's been raiding the hen house. Wasn't me. 
correct. There's something that looked like a yeah, fox, though, but it wasn't this fox. Yeah, and, you know, I think Luxon, he needs to actually, right now, he needs to take stock and realise he's made a, a colossal mistake and he needs to say to the 12 entities, I'm sorry, but here is the inquiry. These are the terms of reference. You will be required to give evidence and an independent person, independent of your government department, independent of government, will make a determination. And can I just say for the record, my respect for the Electoral Commission is at an all-time low. I just can't believe how poorly the Electoral Commission performs. I mean, whoever's in charge of that, and I don't know, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, but whoever's in charge of the Electoral Commission deserves a don't come Monday. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that. Thanks for your opinions there, Miles. Very much appreciated, and I'm sure the listeners will agree with you. Thanks for calling in to Cam's Buddies. Okay, and we'll see you next week. Absolutely. See you. Hello, Lindley. Welcome to Cam's Buddies. Oh, hi, Cam. How's things? Oh, you know, box of fluffies. Everything's going swimmingly in the world. What about you? Oh, really good. I've had a great week, um, especially um, following all the, the news and scandals. Mm. <laughs> I love scandals. It's just uh, a feast for me to um, tuck into and, and look into. And speaking of scandals, uh, I thought what we'd talk about tonight is the announcement on Monday from Christopher Luxon that there's going to be a wide-ranging inquiry involving no less than 12 government departments on the shenanigans that have been going on with Te Pāti Māori and Manurewa Marae and, and all of the guff associated with that. What are your thoughts on that, Lindley? <laughs> well, what can I say? It looks like straight-out bribery, corruption and election rigging to me in a nutshell. Um, but I don't suppose you do knitting, Cam. But no, um, no. Some, some of our listeners will. Unravelling this uh, is like trying to sort a skein of wool after the kitten's been in it. Um, well, but uh, Lux, Mr. Lux, unraveling's Lux, what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, have a go at a skein of wool sometime. Yeah. And you'll get my drift. Um, anyway, uh, Mr. Luxon says he, he wants his inquiry to distill and synthesise, which is sort of stuck in my mind. Yeah, it sounds uh, it like does bullshit sound to rather me. the same. <laughs> it sounds the same to me uh, as uh, the kitten in the yeah. chain of wool, actually. Yeah, it, so um, it sounds very corporate, doesn't it? It does. Um, I know that he's trying to present himself as the man of reason and all the rest of it, uh, and I am relying on the presentation of what he has said uh, from the mainstream media, and I must um, rein myself in a bit um, over that because they, they can make things a lot look a lot different to what they really are. Um, but I was struck by the very soft tone of uh, both he and Christopher Hipkins. They sort of said the right words, but I didn't hear any um, sort of indignation or anything like that. And really, it is an absolutely outrageous uh, list of scandals, uh, alleged scandals, isn't it? It's not just from one person either. This is, there's multiple whistleblowers here. Uh, there's there's people from the Marae. There's people that are associated with Destiny Church that have been involved with the Marae. There's people in government departments. Uh, but bizarrely, you've got the Electoral Commission claiming there's never been any complaints. Well, I happen to know there's several complaints because I've spoken to some of the complainants who have got emails and an email trail showing that they have complained to the Electoral Commission. So that's going to be somewhat embarrassing when that comes out. Well, it certainly is. Uh, as I understand it, um, the early attempts were, were made to alert Stats New Zealand and uh, Ministry of Social Development, and they, they were ignored. So that, that was um, while everything was actually happening, wasn't it? And then after that, they had I think, is it seven complaints were made, and some were from Labour, Vision New Zealand, I mean, uh, and to the Electoral Commission. I mean, you would have thought they'd have been... Well, I understand, actually, that they... 
did look into it, but they've conveniently um, just let let um, those social media videos stay up and everything until after the election. I mean, what's going on here? Well, what's interesting is uh, MSD has been rather silent. It's a Ministry of Social Development have been silent mm. over the allegations about their involvement in the Manuri Marae saga. What what do we find out? Uh, what do we find out on Tuesday via? via some people who have been digging into things on X or Twitter, as it used to be called. Turns out that MSD has run a jobs expo at the Marae when uh, Tash Kemp was the CEO. So just 10 days out from the election where you could get a job and also enjoy a free hangy and coffee, you know? So yes. it's, uh, it's hilarious. Well, it's, yeah. yeah, it is. It, it, you know, it's like a black comedy, really. And, um, I mean, uh, Mr. Tamahiri and uh, Ms. Kemp um, and others, they seem to be right through this whole thing. Um, so, you know, some of them have got that many posts. Well, I couldn't possibly tell you what they are. They've got so many. Yeah. Uh, they should not, should not be in um, so many positions of power. It's just wrong. I mean, you, you know, it, I mean, it is wrong. When you look at something as ob- it, like this, they call it an employment expo. Right, 10 days out from the election, which at a polling booth, because the Marae was a polling booth, so people could attend the, the Marae for this employment expo, uh, get free hungy coffee, donuts, ice cream, health checks. Oh, and of course you can vote at the same time. All at the Marae that provides you with bucket loads of free stuff and where the CEO just happens to be on the ballot paper. I know, and you forgot the $100 grocery vouchers. Uh, although that was some days later, but um, that was to switch roles, and it wasn't salad rolls, was it? It was electoral rolls. Yeah. And talking talking of salad rolls, that list of um, freebies that you just called out, it's no wonder they've got a health problem, is it? I mean, would you be tempted by a load of donuts and a free hangy? I certainly wouldn't. And uh, no, I'm I'm not a big fan of hangy, to be fair. Uh, never really. Oh no, been I had one big, once. Yeah. Um, it's not appealing. Um, no, not for me, but certainly not donuts. Uh, well, like, I'm partial to donuts and ice cream, you know, but I don't drink coffee either, you? so maybe, maybe I'm not the target market. Mm, but uh, would it actually tempt you to do something that's a bit shady? Um, a bunch of donuts? Not me, no. no. Do you other people? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> this is right. But I'll tell you what, the Maori party heads, uh, they're a real worry to me and they have been for a long time, ever since I saw that geezer stand up in uh, Parliament and I cannot remember now whether it was Tamahiri or the hat one, um, Waititi, but I can remember him standing up and ranting on about uh, the Vision, Vision 40 thing and how the Maori were going to have sovereignty <clears throat> um, by a certain date, and since then I've been really quite worried about it. Um, it, would, but, it wouldn't have been Tim Harry because he hasn't been in Parliament since he was booted out of the Labour Party, so it wouldn't be him. No, it would have been Ravari Waititi. But but, but I take your point. Must, you know, um, I, must, I'd, you go ahead. Mm, um, you know that that has been a, a real concern to me ever since then because he was so committed to what he was saying, and I can see that sooner or later a signed piece of paper will contain them as well as a cobweb around Goliath. They're not uh, going. They're it, not uh, honourable right. people, and they're not going to be contained by signing an agreement on a piece of paper. No, that's well, what I can see. But what I find interesting in, in looking back at history, and, you know, I, I love history. I did really well at school with history. Right. But you learn from history. Now, some people say, oh, no, they, they've got a very small uh, following, don't really need to um, take much notice of them. Uh, they're not uh, that popular. Um, just ignore them. Well, somebody did that in Germany Um trying to ignore mm. a, a little Austrian fellow with a silly moustache. And uh, mm. that didn't go so well for the rest of us, uh, ignoring him while he built a little army of thugs, uh, started smashing and breaking and assaulting and, uh, you know, various other forms of thuggery to get into power. Uh, 
you know, eventually mm. ended up in power and brought the world into a global war. Um, I, I'm not saying that Te Party Maori will do that, but I'm saying that we shouldn't ignore what they say and what they do because they are clearly telling us out loud what their plans are for New Zealand. They absolutely are. And when they stand up in Parliament and say it, uh, you do have to listen. And, you know, I fear that they're just spoiled brats. They're not like unlike a spoiled two-year-old, really. Um, but what makes me really cross is it's colonisation's values that is actually spoiling them. It's our values that, that let them get away with things um, and listen to ideology and everything. And I think they should have been held account many, many decades ago. Um, and they're like a horse with a bit between its teeth now. They've had a taste of uh, their own power. And I think it is actually a real worry. Uh, and then uh, Waititi said, in one other stage, he said, um, this was just prior to uh, the election, he said that the Maori Party will establish a Maori Electoral Commission they got voted in uh, and take matters into their own hands. Mm. And he said that Pākehā could join him and jump into his walker and that they'd look after us. Well, I'll tell you what, Cam, I'd rather jump into the Titanic where I'd have a 1% chance of landing a lifeboat than rely on Mr Waititi, wouldn't you? Well, especially with the women and children first policy in the Titanic. <laughs> exactly. But, um, um, you, know, uh, you know, Trevor Loudon uh, 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 was interviewed on RCR and he made the comment that uh, what we don't realise about this crowd to party Maori is that what they're doing uh, is a Stalinist denationing or, or similar by a bunch of Marxists who have links to the CCP in China. And, you know, I don't think he's wrong on that. I think we're seeing cultural Marxism uh, at, at its extreme uh, causing problems in a society that they'll say we can fix using their methods. Using the Maori methods or the Chinese methods? Both. They're very similar. Mm. Well, I, I, um, I'm a bit more um, rude than that, really. I just think that they've had a taste of money. They know where to get free money from and they're all in for it. Um, and it's very hard to hold people back once they've had a taste of that. I think well, it's Raul, all about the money. Yep, Rauri Waititi, think... Waititi said that he was declaring independence from Parliament, but I, I haven't seen any evidence that he's handed back his paycheck from Parliament. No, no, there's there's no such thing in his statement as independence. You know, if we if hmm. we're independent, we have to make our own way, don't we? Well, that's right. So, um, no, they're not making their own way. Um, and I did see somewhere that that he said that um, the tax system should fund them. He actually said that. Yeah, that's that's what what they interpret the treaty as. Article three says, "You all pay, and we take." That's what how they interpret Article three of the treaty. They talk about partnership, yeah, but, but it's a one way partnership. That's actually not a partnership. Uh, because a partnership implies that you're both working together for the future of New Zealand, and it's clear that they're not. So, you reckon this, re mm. this, uh, these reviews will will be a brown wash? Well, I don't think they will be anything like they should be. Uh, they should have jumped on this so big. I mean, look, look what happened when uh, New Zealand first um, got chased around by the, by the serious fraud office. You know, that, yeah. that was an absolute outrage. It was all through the media and it went on and on and on. It was an absolute outrage the way they presented that. This particular scandal, which I think is really bad, it's just a very soft uh, report at this stage. So what does that say about the review? Yeah, well, that's, I think, where we're going to all end up in six months' time when eventually it trundles through the civil service and the the, the politicians, and we'll find out nothing to see here. Um, it's a figment of everybody's imagination. No, they should sack the lot of them, teach them a proper lesson. Yeah. Good All right, pick, pick up the backside would do wonders. Okay, Cam, well, thanks for that. It's a very interesting topic anyway. 
Very interesting. Thank you very much for your call to Cam's Buddies. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Good to have you back. Thanks for having me back. How are you, Cam? Oh, fantastic, mate. What about yourself? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Pretty good. Things are going well for me, as often they are. Oh, well, that's what happens, you know. If you have a positive disposition in life, uh, good things happen to you often. Well, I think I'm an invoice paranoid. I think the world is conspiring to do me good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of, of looking at it. A very good way of looking at it. <laughs> uh, the opposite of doing good is doing bad. Uh, what do you think of the news on Monday evening, uh, Christopher Luxon announcing a wide-ranging inquiry of tw- with 12 government departments looking into the shenanigans at uh, Manurewa Marae and the involvement of those departments uh, and the involvement of Te Pāti Māori. Yeah, I, um, I think it's a bit interesting. I think that um, when the electorate seat of one is close, and I, I think if I remember... 42 rightly, votes. Um, 42 votes. Um, mm-hmm. That was in the recount, it was four before that. Yeah. And um, I think um, the Labour candidate, what's his name, um, Henry. Yep, Pinay Henry. I think he was a minister and he was doing pretty well. And what is it, five days be- before that, he was 37 in the poll and um, Tiakatai or whatever her name is, was 27. So he was way ahead of her. Mm. And, um, oh yeah, Takatai Kemp. I think he was way ahead of her, and, and so I'm thinking, well, well that's a bit interesting. Mm. And that was a um, a COVID station in the Manurewa Marae. That was a place you could go and get your COVID jab, and so that they had access to people's health numbers, I would imagine. And so if there's a bit of a crossover there, and then they start recruiting people to come forward and vote in that seat for Takatai, then I'm suddenly thinking, yeah, that sounds like Te Party Maori got an extra seat there in the overhang that should have been Labour's, and there'd be one well, less in the overhang. It's even more interesting than that. On Tuesday, somebody on Twitter or X uh, has revealed that 10 days before the election, on October the 4th, uh, the Ministry of Social Development held an employment expo at Manurewa Marae, where Tash Kemp was the CEO. So 10 days out from the election... Uh, you could go along where you can find out about jobs and you could also enjoy a free hungi, coffee, donuts, ice cream, get some health checks. And, of course, you could swap from the general role to the Maori role and vote all at the Marae. That provides you with bucket loads of free stuff and where the CEO just happened to be on the ballot paper. Yeah, the, the Seems to be something interesting there, doesn't there? And, and I know that John Tomahiri has been a great one saying, oh, nothing to see here, nothing. Give us your evidence, there's nothing to see here. Mm. Well, I remember some while ago, and this is just allegedly that I saw it, uh, I was talking to someone at one of these businesses, and the shredder used to go flat strap when there was ever an investigation into some people. And um, I, I ended up telling a... Um, a phone system into um, something that John was, in fact, quite high up in. And I remember thinking the Waipurira Trust, when they bought this phone system, that's where I was told and saw that the shredder was actually a really popular item. Mm. And so I'm thinking when these things are popular, often the shredder's going because some evidence isn't actually that handy to be read at this time. And, and I don't know that there was anything untoward going on, but I do know that the shredder was just on full bore. And I remember <laughs> thinking, that's a bit interesting. Yeah, it is a bit interesting. And um, I, I quite like John Tamahiri. He's a rascal, and uh, and he's a bit of a wide boy, but I kind of admire him for having the front to do some of the things he's he does. But I'm really struggling with this one. This is this seems to be systemic, uh, and it seems to be untoward, and it seems to have affected the election result. Oh, I think it's affected the election result. And also, if I remember rightly, wasn't this the seat that John Tamahiri had a good run at and, and missed an um, election or two before to Henry? That's exactly the seat that we're talking about, Tamaki Makara. 
and uh, that that's, and that that's being dead the case, right. He would have a bit of an interest in. Um, you know, when you lose something to someone, you've got a bit more passion about it. And, and I'm not saying he did anything, but when he comes up with the thing, show us your evidence, otherwise sort off, he's not saying I didn't do it. He's not saying we didn't do it. He's not saying it didn't happen. He's saying, show us your evidence, otherwise it's just in your window. And I'm yeah. thinking, good, eh? That's ballsy, though. I mean, it's a ballsy call. Show us your evidence. Uh, and naturally, of course, if the evidence is presented, you'll say, oh, well, they're just a disgruntled staff member and they've, they've fabricated it. They've made it up. They've hacked it. They've done, you know, there'll be, a, there's a million things that he can, can use. Well, my prediction is, is that these inquiries will throw some low level functionaries under the bus. Uh, uh, somebody in the low level in the Maori party will go under the bus and John Tamahiri will proclaim that they're all squeaky clean and it was a couple of rogue elements. That's what I reckon is going to happen. Well, my my thought is that what they're going to say is it's racist and you're picking on us because we're Maori. Oh, and they've already said there was that. nothing to see here. Yes, well, exactly, <laughs> but they'll be saying more. And even when caught red-handed, it's just a racist slur on Maori. And my belief is that the government will capitulate to that and do absolutely nothing. Well, I think Christopher Lux is in a hard place here because he has to appear tough. And sorry, he didn't appear tough. He appeared weak uh, on Monday night. But but I think that Winston Peters and Shane Jones and David Seymour will be licking their lips with glee that Luxon has been so weak on this because they can just use Parliament uh, all day long to highlight all of the inconsistency and uh, they'll be the ones who profit from this, not the National Party. Exactly. And I think um, David Seymour's got a very balanced thing that he's saying. He's saying, um, well, let's have a look at the evidence and if, let's uh, use the evidence to exonerate the party Maori or prosecute them. Mm. I quite like that he's thrown in that exonerate. I'm thinking, who's thinking that's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's ever going to happen, just quietly. <laughs> and But I did think it was quite a wise thing for him to throw in there because to say, well, if I've been maligned unfairly, let's exonerate them. I'm thinking yeah. today's a quite good word. <laughs> yeah, he's very cunning, isn't he? I mean, you have to give David Seymour that. He is very, very cunning. Well, it's the smart thing to do in this situation. I think it makes him look balanced and fair, even though I'm pretty sure in his own mind, and this is only my opinion again, that he's thinking this is only going to turn out one way. Yeah, well, David Farah uh, posted something interesting on his uh, website about uh, about the Wai Pereira Trust. In 2020, they had, uh, and you, you'll like this, you know, just as a summary with the facts from the balance sheet. In 2020, their income was $56 million with a surplus of $5 million, and they had net assets of $49 million. An average senior salary of $200,000. And in 2023, just three or four years later, the income was $72 million for a surplus of $16 million, and net assets had jumped to $84 million, while average senior salaries were $511,000. Yeah, there's no troughing and no one's got their hand in the till. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't hear you say anything like that. I mean, you know, you, what you're I mean, seeing is a, it's about a, uh, 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 you know, the level of profitability there for a commercial business would be brilliant, but this is a charity that we're talking about. So, you know, in t between 2020 and 2023, their income increased 29%, but the surplus increased 220%, and the net assets grew by 71%, and the average salary to the top charitable executives in there increased 155%. It sounds like a pretty good yeah. luck that they've got going there. Well, it's very interesting that if you're in, in a charity and a staff member's getting half a million salary, you'd want them to perform something like it has been performing, to be fair. Yeah. But what legal activity can you think of that you can do that can grow that like that? other than hanging off some form of government department giving you money. Well, that's it's all that's where they get their money from from but you think about having net assets of 84 million. 
right? And on a reasonable, on a 5% interest rate, let's say it's a lot of that's cash in terms of the assets. I imagine some is buildings and they were receiving rents and things like that. But you're probably getting about $5 million in, in return on that just on the asset side of the balance sheet, let alone the in, you know, all the other government grants and the income that comes from those. Mm. And, and the real question is, who's been helped and how much by this thing? Well, that's the thing. If it's a charity, uh, there has to be some people who are beneficiaries of that charity who have received some largesse or, or some help or something like this. And perhaps we should be saying exactly the th- same thing to John Tamahiri, Show us your evidence. Show us your evidence that this yeah. charity is making a difference. And how can you be billing the government for seventy-two million dollars a year and make and having a surplus of sixteen million dollars? Um, maybe we need to cut your yeah, funding by sixteen almost, million. Yeah, it's almost like a school, isn't it? That when you have a balance sheet growing in a school, um, then the money that's been supplied by the um, taxpayer to the um, government back to the school has to be used for the students that are attending the school. So you can only make a small profit there to make sure you've got some reserves for the future spending. And so that's the same thing I imagine with something like the Waipurura Trust. If they're making a big profit, one would assume they're not actually helping the people in the area for housing as they thought that they should be, could be, or would be. Hmm. Oh, it's astonishing. But let's hope that um, these inquiries are not brown washes, that they do actually find some something there, either to exonerate uh, John Tamahiri, the Waipurera Trust, the, the Maori Party, and everyone involved, or prove the point of the whistleblowers, and then we get to throw the book at them. But I'm um, I'm afraid yeah. I don't. I just have no confidence that they will throw the book at them if they do find such things. Do you think it's reasonable that someone at the Trust level gets paid more than the Prime Minister, I wonder? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I, I don't think it is reasonable. You know, there's plenty of other charities mm. out there that could uh, could do with some of that money, I would imagine. I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, kids can, would benefit from a fair whack of that money, and, and they've got a proven track record of providing help. Uh, and then you've got, mm. you know, um, even... Uh, yeah, everyone moaned about Mike King's charity getting uh, government money, uh, and there seemed to be an inordinate amount of scrutiny over that. But nobody says anything about My Pereira Trust. Interesting. Mm. Well, I liked uh, Mike King. One of his philosophies is we don't use the money that we we have raised here for administration. We use it all to go to help people that are in need. And I thought that's a pretty good good way to have done things there. But also, my understanding, and I heard this, that the Waipuru Trust helped fund some of the Te Party Maori political candidates. And I'm thinking, it can't be true. It is it? true. No, it is true. And uh, the Electoral Commission looked at that and sort of washed their hands of it. And it's probably you know, a fair bit of um, you know, brown shoe polish or something involved in that. But, uh, yeah, there wasn't uh, – everybody said nothing to see here and and – that were declared as loans from John Tamahiri and the Waipurera Trust. But, you know, when the, when the New Zealand First uh, Party uses creative ways to achieve donations, uh, well, the Serious Fraud Office gets involved, don't they? Yeah, even though they're fair and legitimate and legal in, some, in, the, in the case of New Zealand First, so it turns out, I mean, everybody gets exonerated fully. And, hello, these ones, oh, they don't want to go any further because it might have a bad bad look or you might be being racist and I'm thinking, wow Yep, wow indeed Alright Paul, thanks for calling into Cam's Buddies and we'll talk again next week Take care, bye for now Welcome Jack, everybody's favourite on Cam's Buddies, well one person anyway Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> one person I had to pay a large amount of money to get that one person to say it was something your, nice It was your son, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Well, glad to hear you laughing. Uh, and what we're going to talk about is probably not a laughing matter. I'm interested in your thoughts on these wide-ranging uh, inquiries into the shenanigans at Manurewa mm-hmm. Marae, Te Pāti Māori, and possibly the involvement of Waipurera Trust as well. 
and these 12 government departments and what your thoughts are on that, whether there'll be a result or no result or a brown wash or a white wash or whatever? Well, first of all, I don't think anyone's surprised. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> but to be fair, what they've done or alleged to have done is really nothing compared with the example that's been set by several European uh, people in this country. I can name a couple of them, but I won't, who bought an island off the Coromandel Peninsula. And what they did leaves John Tamahiri looking like a patron saint. Yeah, I don't know whether anything will come of it. I mean, there's so many crooks um, in this country. It's, I think Winston Peters could probably name every one of them. He's had dealings with most of them and sued them for one reason or another. Um, but getting back to um, John Tamahiri and co., um, yeah, who knows what will happen. Probably nothing, as usual, and it'll just cost a lot of money. Yeah, it'll cost a lot of money, and I think we'll hear that uh, nothing to see here. And there might be a couple of low-level people get thrown under the bus, um, but we'll all be declared yep. to be kosher and everything's all good, nothing to see here. And, by the way, we've just spent $10 million yep. investigating it. Yeah, that's my thoughts. All right. So you don't think you don't have any confidence at all. How do, what about the impact on Christopher Luxon with this? He's the one who's announced this inquiry. If it comes back and it shows that, and more revelations come out, and it's still you know nothing to see here, will that impact him? Do you think? No, I don't think anybody really cares. Um, to be honest, I see he's going down in the polls again. Although yeah. to be fair, he is working quite hard at the moment. I'll mm. give him his due there. He's not getting, getting any credit and, for it um, in the polls, though, doing is a bit of stuff. No, but then um, nobody that's working hard seems to be getting any credit in the polls. Uh, and the ones that are doing absolutely nothing are going up. I can't <laughs> believe it. I don't know where they get these polls from. It's nuts, isn't no it? No one's told me. Well, maybe they should. Con- no no oh, yeah. one's. Po- yeah, maybe they should poll you. They'd get all sorts of um, crazy um, answers, though. It would be hilarious to see the results of that. Exactly. I mean, but I mean, I, I um, took out our uh, home phone purely because I got sick of being um, rung up about polls at six o'clock. So it's of my own uh, doing that I'm not on polls, but I see they're now actually uh, phoning mobile phones. Um, yep. But I haven't been phoned yet. Oh well, maybe I'll, I'll pop your number into um, into the polling companies Won't and make any say like this guy's. My, this guy's desperate to be uh, to be heard. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jack. Thanks for calling into Cam's buddies, and hopefully we'll have your no um, your son will send in another um, uh, you know review about how fantastic you are, and uh, and I'll read it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks, Cam. See you. See you. Bye. You can always rely on Cam's buddies. The truth bombs, and we certainly heard some more there about Te Bati Maori. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's Buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.